I am Toby from Toby Urban Sketch. Today we are looking at five stages to every sketch. Um, basically these are the, the rules that I loosely follow to build up all my sketches and you know whatever style I have a loose on going I tend to follow these steps and it, it just gives me a nice framework to work from. Now if you're enjoying my videos please do like and subscribe. Um, it helps me bring more content and uh, more things which hopefully you're enjoying. Um, and if you have any suggestions, well, just leave me a comment. Anyway, as you can see, I am sort of speed sketching in the background of this one. And I want to talk you through the, the process that I'm going through. So the first step to, to any sketch for me is a loose line drawing. So really wibbly wobbly using a fine pen, in this case a 0.2 millimeter pen. And just building up details. So you can see I started here with the focal points. I've got this fan and then there's a chap sitting in a, I'm going to call it a box, a crow's nest type thing. And he's fixing a lamp post. And these are all quite challenging things to, to draw. So it's important that we're sort of forgiving on ourselves and just start with these really loose lines and gradually build things up rather than thinking that, you know, every line we draw has to be perfect first time. You'll notice I've drawn a random squiggle on the right hand side of the image. And the reason for that is just to, to prove the point that, you know, these random squiggles, they'll disappear. If I've got things wrong, they'll disappear. You, you might have noticed as I was drawing the van, I went over the lines a couple of times and each time the line moved a little bit. And that's just, some, I'm working out where things are going. Now I'm moving on, I've sort of done the, the focal point, right? So it's still on stage one, drawing this loose drawing. I've done the focal point, which is the van and the chap. And now I'm just setting the background. And a really key part of this is you'll notice that the, the exact lining up of the windows doesn't fit the, the reference. It's pretty much there, but it's not exactly right. And things don't have to be exactly the same as a photo reference or as what's in front of you. No one's ever going to see, apart from you guys watching this, no one's ever going to see my sketch next to a photo. So it's okay to move things to make it fit your agenda. That said, it's good to also use cues from the photo to keep things approximately in line. So, you know, for example, when I, I drew the, the garage just behind the, the van in, I kept the edges of the garage lined up with the same place in the van. And then I used the top of the garage to set the bottom of the window and I lend up all the windows, just working through simple processes like this. Now you'll notice on the right, we're now drawing another house and um, I'm gonna pretend, <laughs> not very well, that I drew that first roof line in uh, on purpose again to make the point. But actually what I did is I made quite a big mistake in my perspective. I put the roof um, level with the bottom of the window on the on the left. So you can see I've got this sort of triangle bisecting this this house on the right. That doesn't matter. Again, you know, <laughs> a bit silly. I noticed it and then moved the roof up. But it really doesn't matter that there's these funny lines in there. Everything's going to get lost. So in this first stage of your sketching, all you're trying to do is set the basic idea of what's going on with some loose lines, if you make mistakes, you know, if you, you can work with pencil. So if you make mistakes, you can rub them out. But like this, you can work with pen and it's fine. Mistakes will happen and you've got loosely and with a little like spidery lines or gentle lines, you can just move the line and it, it just won't show up. Already having sort of sketched in those tree-like shapes in the in the gap between the houses, you're losing some of that obvious sort of random triangle in the house. So already things are disappearing. I'm just also have moved on a bit and I've started adding bits of texture um, in places and adding the curb here, giving it a 3D shape, just making the curb more than one line. And I've added some initial shading and hatching just to start giving that loose sketch a tiny bit of shape. So that there is the end of the first stage really loose lines, don't be afraid to move them, and 
don't worry if you make mistakes. It's all about just building up a picture. And what is step two? Of course, it is a lovely loose wash, a sort of loose underpainting of all those bright colours. I like starting with the sky. And if you look at any of my other videos, you'll see I use a very similar process every time. And it is a big wash of water. And then we start dropping pigment in on that water. You can use a tissue like I am there to, to either pull out shapes and textures in the sky or to remove excess water. You can also move the paper around. So initially when I was doing this, I was holding the paper uh, about 10 to 20 degrees angle just to let that water and pigment all run down and naturally pool. And now I've popped it down flat because I want to pull out a few more textures. And I'm just working around with doing some some splashes and some water splashes and then dropping pigment and then moving pig just gently while this is nice and wet moving around one of the key things i'm trying to achieve as well um is i want this chap uh, our sort of the very center of our focal point is probably this this chap in the crow's nest and i want to keep him clean because i want him to really stand out at the end um, and that will be in one of the later stages of course now because things are still wet and because we're doing this really lovely loose painting we can add in extra pigment. So here I'm just adding, there's a cobalt blue sky, I'm adding some quinacridone gold just at the bottom to give that lovely glow and to separate the houses from the sky. But and, you know, it gives them a bit of space but it also gives that lovely glow. It's a, quite a warm sunny day. And I just wash those colours down and join them up to the tree. So that's another really key point about this loose wash. It's it's not just there to provide underpainting and, and light. Uh, it also joins everything up. So the sky is now joined to this glow, which is washed down and joined to this tree. And then I'm going to move around adding in some sort of warm brick colour. So this, this is a mix of um, Scarlet Lake and Cobalt Blue, which gives us, gives us a dull purple. And I'm just using the same colour in slightly different variations on all the bricks and I'm making sure they join up. So you'll see the garage is joined to that wall at the front, which is joined to the house, which is joined to the, the back house. Another step is in this is keeping things simple, but also highlighting important features like windows. The really simple way of doing windows is to use the same color as the sky. Um, or the other way of doing it really simply is to make it a dull color, like a, a paint grey or a shadow colour and then unifying that. So even in the van, I'm just popping in some colour now. It's the same colour as the windows and that means every window has a similar idea and our eye instantly looks across this image and goes, ah, windows. We don't have to explain any more than that. The van is, is white and I'm just setting some initial details here. So we'll do a lot more of these kind of details later in the image. Um, sort of doing shadows and things comes in a later stage of my normal sketching process. But this is kind of just applying a little bit of that loose texture and wash to the, to the very foreground before we move on. And now we move on. So what is the next step? It is, bring, I'm gonna call it bringing things forward with the pen and just pulling out details, but it's, it's the pen work number two. And what I do, I, I was showing you Briefly, I don't know if you caught it, that this is a bigger pen. So I was using a 0.2 pen for the first sketch. Now this is a 0.4. And I often use 0 0.4, 0 0.5, sometimes on a big thing, a 0.8 even. And you'll notice as things are outlined with this bolder pen, they suddenly come forward. They, they, they jump out the page. And I just start at the back and work forward this time. Because that means as you, if you start gently at the back, think it will, things, important details in the back, like the roof, the windows will come forward. And then you'll gradually be able to see how much more forward you need to bring other things like the focal point. And now I'm getting there now to the focal point, to the van. And I'm highlighting this key details. I always love, for example, bringing out lights and number plates in, in vehicles, because I really think that they're a key part of our understanding of what that is. And you'll see in that sort of shadowy interior of the van, rather than focus on what's in the reference image, 
I've just used the pen to outline the shapes which I've created with sort of fairly random shadows inside. And it, it just makes sense when you do that. It sort of instantly just, we have made sense of fairly random processes by just using the pen to outline shapes which that randomness has produced. I'm just continuing around now and making sure that these lines on our man, on our van, on the sort of arm holding the crow's nest up, that they are the boldest thing because these these are both the most important part of our image in terms of being the focal point and two they're the furthest forward so we want them to be brought the furthest forward then sort of just looking around the image and seeing what else can i add like finding little details and adding shape in by getting a bit of dark black under the crow's nest before moving of course to what is now stage four and stage four is shadows and shadows are really key. There's loads of lovely colours you can use for shadows. Here I'm using Indantrone Blue and a Van Dyke Brown. Classically, people will use Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna or Burnt Umber or Payne's Grey or Neutral Tint. There's loads of options. Moon Glow's a favourite. And I'm just going under, you know, under everywhere there might be shadows. So under the eaves of the houses, under the roof, under all the windows, at the top of the windows, um, under the lines in that van, at the top of walls, just producing these these effects, essentially. And then after we've done our shadows, we move on to the next stage. And the next stage is those final bright and interesting colour touches. And you'll see I've been sort of splashing around and splashes are wonderful for that. And then I'm also adding in these bright colours. So here there's some yellow. Again, like I'd say I love road markings and you can see I've popped in some road markings. Um, and then using the same yellow for the light at the front and the same yellow for the arm and for the man. And just making these colours the most intense, the brightest colours. They're all in our focal point. And so everything there will just be easy to see, easy to visualise. And and that's that done. So we'll see. I suppose stage six, pop a signature on it and feel proud. Doesn't matter how it went, you probably from everything learned something. Um one thing I should have done in a slightly earlier stage <laughs> was was actually add in these telephone telephone wires, which I think are something which make a a painting really interesting, having these shapes uh just flowing across the page. So this is uh, me talking too much and forgetting in stage three to just finish off those bits of pen work. But never too late. You can always go back. And that just goes to show essentially that even if you don't do things in exactly the right order, it doesn't matter. You can, you can go back, you can change things. You don't have to stick rigidly to rules. Rules are nice if they help you guide your process, but not if they hinder you. And that's the painting complete. So if you've enjoyed this, please do leave a comment, like, subscribe. I'd love to bring you more content like this if it's if it's useful. So this 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 painting probably took me 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Um and then doing a speed turning it to speed drawing so I can talk about principles. Is that useful? If it is, just let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Hope you get to do something creative today as well.